Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. Uh, joining me again today is Brian Legalio. Got that right? We got some six inch Schedule 80 pipe with a 332 gap, uh, 332 face on for a land. And we're using the Everlast Power Arc 161 as our power source. We're gonna be running some eighth inch diameter 6010, the 5P variety. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brian's gonna show me how to put a root in there. So Brian, tell me, where where is this primarily going to be used and why would we use shielded metal arc welding as opposed to a MIG or a TIG process? Um, you know, it depends on the industry. This is still commonly used in oil and petroleum API. So, okay. Um, it's been phased out of power, power generation. Be with that being said, there you'll, you'll hear sayings where people say, you'll never see a 6010 rod in here, which there's always exception to that rule. Um, like cert water, cooling water loops for like natural gas or coal could be welded in this process, but like oil, natural gas, um, like I said, API 1104. Wimp and pause, you know, we'll do that when the, the keyhole starts opening up a little bit more, but we're gonna try to, we got a nice tight gap on this side. Um, it's a little bit open on this side. We're gonna try to drag it. Okay, and then talk to me a little bit about technique. Technique. Um, the biggest thing is getting that rod in there and into the groove. And if you have everything moving right, you can just drag it or putting a little stitch in it and you're getting sufficient reinforcement without having to carry a giant keyhole around. Um, when that keyhole starts getting out of control, you've got to start using the fast freeze um, application of this rod to its advantage and start bringing it out, you know, and deposit metal. The biggest problem is when you start keyholing as new welders, they start depositing metal in the middle of that keyhole or trying to. And when you're not on the backside, which we'll show you while we're doing it, if you're not on the backside of that keyhole and you're floating that rod in the middle of the keyhole, you're just putting heat more kilojoules to the, to the piece of ma the material to the pipe and you're opening up that keyhole some more. Okay. And that, that's just going to make things even worse. Yeah. You know, you got to, if that <clears throat> keyhole starts getting out of control, stop. All right, so kind of walk me through, I know body language and position is a big thing with this. So what are you doing yeah. with your hands? What are you doing with your feet? Because you're actually, like with plate, you know, we're just pretty much standing still. Everything's in the arms. You want three points of contact. How are we doing with this pipe? Because yep. we're, we're actually rotating it around. Th three points of contact stands. Um, I like to hold my um, electrode on a 45 degree angle down in the stinger. Show me that real quick, just for the folks at home. So, if I can. Too many, too many bang energy. Yeah, too many bang energy, too much coffee. <laughs> uh, so like this, you know, and right there, I can get a lot of motion just right here. If I was 45 degree angle up or even straight in, you know, I have, to, there's You've a, lot, got a more, lot more movement. Yes. So this, this tightens up the, the radius that I'm actually moving right So here. now you're spinning from your wrist as opposed right. to like your elbow, full, shoulder, full body. Full body. Um, so on something like this, Good fire call. up. Mm -hmm. And you know, typically I want to drag it. I'm going to have a, a drag angle either way because I'm depositing the metal on the back side of the keyhole. But if I can just come around and keep with that radius and as this consumable consumes, I get closer. You're just coming around. Um, the biggest thing with this is fit, fitment. You want to, especially new, you want to standardize your fit as much as possible. You want repeatability. When you slam these two pipes together, you wanna know your gap, your land, and try to mitigate your high-low as best as possible. So pipe alignment, when we talk about high-low pipe alignment, In internal. internal pipe alignment. Yeah, we fit everything to the inside on pipe. Uh, outside really doesn't matter because we're having something flow through it. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing with it is just trying to make it the same or as close to the same as possible so you can make adjustments in your machine you start swapping too many things as machine or fitment or land. Too or many variables, that. you can't maintain you consistency can't. and right. really dial in what you're doing wrong. Exactly, so um, I like a 332 gap, a 332 land, about 70 amps, you know, they're about, and I like to drag my root, especially in a... And you can hear the tone. Oh yeah, and actually, um, the more you weld 6010, you can hear, when you light up with it, you can hear, before you're putting the root in, you can hear the tone change. If you strike up with 6010 or 5P in general, and you try to just go into it, it's gonna start sticking on you. 
we have to run a conserved amperage on this because we're trying to balance out, you know, putting a penetration root. profile. Yeah. And sure, I could turn it up a whole bunch and run it hot, but for me, it gets out of control pretty quick. Um, what I was saying though is this rod, you fire up with it, you can hear it get to like a certain point where it's ready to run. Um, Almost you, like a preheat. Yes. Yeah, um, sp these are very sensitive. The 5P plus, or 6010 plus plus plus, um, that's not nearly as critical. These red rods, you have to fire up long arc it for a second and start getting some heat. And then just kind of ease into yeah. it. Okay. And then I noticed you're maintaining almost like a, a five degree angle kind of favoring that top leading edge um, or that top edge. You know, really, you guys watch me weld and it's hard for me to tell you what I was doing. I do know I'm, I'm favoring the top. We're in a horizontal position, so gravity's helping me. It's gonna pull that puddle back down. Right, or if I was straight in, it's gonna work against me. So I, I wanna use everything I can to my advantage, so. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's flip it over and I'll, I'll give her a go. Give it the old college try. Give it the old college try, as Man Cub says. It's just flat. I'm not saying that. You should. No. I've, uh, my, my cool point factor has gone up significantly since I started using the term show slap. To who? My students. That's not true. That's They're just laughing at you. No, no, I've, they've, <laughs> they've All right, so I was able to get uh, get about four inches in there, and then I kind of stuck right there at the end, just trying to manipulate, get my hands yeah. where I needed to. Um, I want to go ahead and clean this up, feather that back, and then try it again. So you need to feather, let's say a half inch or greater. Okay. When you make your tie-in, you need to pop through here, because if you start putting your root in here, you're gonna miss your tie-in. Okay. Um, so having a nice gradual ramp in, especially with the way we are gonna have to run these rods, um, give yourself a nice That'll run. give me that area to preheat the end of the yep. rod and get it going and get that sound back. And, and if you get this paper thin, blow it out, and then you can make a nice tie-in internally. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's give it a shot. When you fired up and did that, you're in the middle of your keyhole. You need to deposit just on the south side of the keyhole. That's the best way I can explain it. So I had you stop because you did the typical thing a new guy does. Your rod is right here. We need your rod to be just about right there when you're depositing metal. When you're right here, you're just putting heat in it. Um, that, like, I know that's where your brain tells you to go, mm -hmm. but it should be more of a, when you're whipping, you're coming right about here, whipping right about here. And it doesn't make sense like, to a welder like to your brain because everyone wants the metal right there you just got to build it off of where you were just at okay so kind of building a foundation yeah exactly um it's like it's like you're building bricks or a building you set your first brick and you have to set the next one and they're only so tall mm -hmm. what's gonna happen now because we thinned it out you're gonna fire up here you're gonna be you're gonna open up should open up right about there now you're gonna have this whole area Fast freeze rod. I'm gonna, I'm, that area's gonna open up. I'm gonna come out, back in, out, back in. Now I have to let that freeze action of this rod, I have to use it to its benefit now. Um, we're not in a scenario where you can just drag it. That fit isn't in your favor anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's fixable. Up. 
All right, so what happened there? Well, this just started filling up when I was whipping out. Um, so when you when you have a little bit of deposit like that, instead of whipping further out, you got to start tightening up your steps so you can burn through it. Okay. Um, this isn't this isn't like you have to watch what you're doing and you have to change your uh, technique as different things come up, like anything else. Um, that right there being one. So like, let's talk about tying in. Like, if this was how you're tying in, you're tying in well. You don't just come right here and you stop. You have to walk yourself out of it. Um, you're gonna want to like open up a keyhole similar to this as you're coming this way. Say I was coming from this way on and to tie in here, I'd start opening up a keyhole and I want to start walking that keyhole until I start hitting thicker material. So that transition is pretty smooth from the inside. Yeah. Okay. From the inside. Thank you. You're welcome. So you wanna? Yeah, I wanna see how, how would you do this? Ten pipe, sixty ten pipe. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of practicing to do on this, so that's probably another thing I'm gonna take uh, take back to the school and, and slam a couple pieces together with that nickel land and uh, nickel nickel gap. And that's what you said last time. I don't. I, oh, you I, should see my TIG game. Way, I mean, it's just out of I, this world. I got time. You, you got time? You I mean, we can it? we can throw down. Well, uh, well, let's close this out real All quick, right. and then uh, then I'll show you what's up. Please do. So no, this is uh, it's it's definitely different. Uh, running open root 6010, it's a, a completely different electrode than an iron worker's used to. Sure. Most of the stuff I do is 7018, a and lot of flux core. Again, there's guys that that's all they run. They they run 10 series rods, 70, 7010, 8010, 9010. But there's guys that are much better at this that do this all day long. But this is just another tool in the toolbox. Okay. So right after this. Uh, We'd obviously clean this out, and then we'd follow it up with another 6010 pass, or now, go right into 7018. Uh, where, where I come from, now this differs where you're at. Where I come from, you're gonna run 7018 now. Okay. Um, there are some places and procedures that would want you to run a hot pass after that. Okay. And that is actually a hot pass at that point. And this just bumping up like another five, ten amps, mm. and then throwing another pass in there. Uh, it depends. You know, the guys that run it all the time, they're probably bumping up. 10, 15, 20 amps. Okay. Well, cool, man. Appreciate you coming out and uh, showing me some more stuff on the old O-beam. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something at home. Go ahead, practice this out. Um, thanks again for coming out. Appreciate it. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. Also, if you have any video recommendations, something you guys want to see, viewer requests, go ahead and either drop in the comment section or hit us up on the website. You want to close her out? Follow me on Bingo Welding on Instagram. There we go. Until next time, make your world better than your last. Weld mean well green.